Good day and uh, welcome to the Phono Cave. Today we have a quite special uh, machine. Uh, this is the this is the Cliftophone. It's a European version of uh, an American machine. The original was made by uh, Brunswick Colander Company, and it's kind of a variation on the Altona system. Uh, in in the way that it has a, an arm that is, uh, is is transverse to the the plateau. In this way, it's not the uh, the pate uh, pate uh, playing uh, position, but it's a position for uh, normal records because the needle is tilted like that. The nice thing about this machine is, let's remove the crank, then oh, we have to unscrew it a bit. There we are. Dab it, dab it up, dab it, dab it up. Will it come out? Yes, it will. As you can see, the motor is rather small, and it is slightly underpowered, but uh, it's powerful enough to play one record without any problems whatsoever. It has, you know, for its size it has quite a large spring, but it's not very long. The system, you would say, you know, a lot of people say, you know, it's the arm, the cliftophone arm that gives the system the name, but it isn't. This, on the inside, this tube that ends, that's the system. That's called the uh, cliftophone amplifier. The tube that comes from the tone arm, oops, the tube that comes from the tone arm goes into this thicker tube on the inside here. And it bounces off even been told that it uh, has several layers in there in with which the sound travels and then it goes back into the horn so basically it's a, a miniature re-entrant system which is very smart the same system is still used in in megaphones today let's put it back into its box there we are i have quite a dry throat because I kind of all did this before but I kind of forgot to push, uh, push the record button so I have to do it all over again which is rather a piece of a drag. The, the membrane of the uh, of the cliftophone is made out of uh, celluloid and surprisingly it's, it's not too fragile. Uh, I haven't seen uh, cliftophones with a uh, broken uh, membrane. I have seen cliftophones with a de detached uh, sound lever, but you know that's easily repaired with a drop of glue. Uh, if you take the plateau off, you see that it's not all cast iron. This is either thin plywood or it's cardboard. And on that, the, the felt of the plateau is fixed. The crank of this machine uh, had quite a bit of trouble as well. Uh, it was completely rusted, stuck uh, to, to the metal, so you couldn't do this. And that's rather a drag when you try to wind it and you have a piece of wood uh, pretty much gouging into your hand, which, you know, you get friction, it gets hot, you, you can get blisters by winding up your, your machine. Not a very nice thing. So there it is, getting a bit of juice there. The, a lot of people would say, you know, uh, it looks incomplete because you're missing a record flap. This is, is not true. The machine is complete. The only thing it is missing is 
a little cardboard uh, flap that goes in here which is loose so it, it got lost and in some cases uh, it never got uh, sold with the machine so it yeah you, know, you open this this bar like this you put your records in and then you push it back you push it against the lid and your records won't go anywhere the records that originally went with this machine uh, the Brunswick, Brunswick version of course were were these as you can see Brunswick Cliftophone record these uh, the system that I just showed has the effect that it kind of enlarges the base frequencies and depresses the very high frequencies and the very high frequencies are of course the frequencies where we have the needle hiss and the needle hiss you know there were all kinds of way that they avoided it with big furniture pieces uh, it always says in basically with all the HMV uh, furniture models and tabletops it says in the lid closed lid whilst playing and that's to decrease these nasty frequencies of needle hiss with this they of course had the, the the very special horn system but also they laid the sound box flat so the frequencies that were there wouldn't hit you in the face also for 1928 is quite early but it's a capped sound box so this sound box is capped and also reduces the needle hiss to a certain extent so now we will open it up and I will show you, you know, another great feature about this machine is that you can play it with the lid closed and the effect of that is, is that you have a day and night machine There we are. It's a hell of a lot softer now. And that's quite a great feature that you really don't see on any other portable gramophone. You know, I've seen many portable gramophones uh, in my days, but I have never seen one with which you can play with the lid closed. And that's really, really, really great. Take you off the close up of the needle. And then, that's a uh, Sheffield type break, and these are really, really crappy. It's one of the few crappy uh, things on this machine. Uh, what you basically got is a uh, a hub here which holds uh, a, a spring metal piece of spring which has a, a piece of hardened vulcanized rubber on it and what you do is you, you to release it you put it in neutral and it will go loose and to break it you go all the way over there of course the uh, the spring metal uh, in a lot of cases is bent and not in good position and uh, in a lot of cases this this doesn't work also the hub you see here tends to break loose as well as the uh, engaging me mechanism of the brake the original uh, version of this gramophone was called Enophone it was produced in France in 1927 or so this model is for the British market from 1928. This Enophone is different in that uh, it has uh, e the, a plaque which says Enophone on the front here. And while we see Cliftophone over here, this is just a hub with a 
screw in it and this this is quite an important thing because this holds your records back <laughs> so it, it has a function and Cliftophone probably thought you know that's a nice place to put our name <laughs> uh, you know it's a pretty pretty nice uh, system and it works pretty well it's one of the few uh, innovative uh, portables that has uh, uh, that have changes that actually uh, improve on the very sound of the machine. It sounds very much better than most of the portables of the late 1920s. When I uh, got this, all the metal hardware on the machine was black. But when I uh, saw photos of the machines, of this machine, uh, on advertisements of the 1920s, all of these hard, all of that hardware was shiny. So I tested out on buffing one of the back uh, corners, and found that they were bronzed. So. What have happened over the years is that this 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 bronze, this copper plating, is is very sensitive to uh, corroding, and it had simply turned black over the years. And by buffing it up a bit, we've got it back to what was probably the original way it was sold. So if you find a a clistophone like that and you've got black hardware nothing to worry about it's not paint that's on there it's simply blackened copper it's of course it's probably a steel uh, steel corners and steel locks that were copper plated and quite thickly as well so it was really meant to be seen you wouldn't uh, copper plate it that thickly and then cover it with black paint <laughs> Uh, Price-wise, these machines were you know, relatively cheap. You know, uh, they would cost quite a bit less than a, a HMV 101. And as far as the sound is concerned, you get something that's quite better than the 101. It's loud, it's clear, it has pretty much 90% uh, less needle hiss, and yeah, got the added bonus that you can play it at night. You know, you can put this next to your bed and play it. You know, I, I tried it. You know, in the next room to me, uh, the people that I live with are sleeping. And I simply put it on, close the lid, and nobody was the wiser for it. Works perfectly. So, quite a nice new addition to the Phono Cave. And uh, the question that uh, I always ask myself about a certain machine is, is it a daily player? And with most of the uh, uh, gramophones that we have here, uh, no, most, most of the portable gramophones are not very good. You know, with some exceptions, so the Columbia machines are very well, but most of the uh, B uh, brand uh, uh, portable gramophones it's it's terrible for instance telephone Lido is quite a terrible machine very good looking but very terrible to play uh, and this machine got uh, got a feature in common with the with the Lido and that's the speed indicator it's the same uh, arrangement you've got two screws that uh, are attached to an axle that is attached to uh, the the friction uh, pad of the governor. With this machine, every bit of metal is tempered. It's hardened metal. With the telephone and Lido, it's not hardened metal, and so every time you you turn this and you do this uh, <laughs> ten thousand times, uh, you wear and gouge out the metal rod and eventually you know your, your screws are all the way in and it doesn't work anymore and that's exactly what happened to my telephone Lido so 
But with this, works perfectly. Let's put you back on your pedestal. This, this, this little thing here, you see, fits perfectly into this slot here. So you put it down like that, fits in, doesn't go anywhere. And that's very nice. Also, a thing you don't really find on other gramophones. If you have a tone arm, you always have to, you know, put it all the way in the back and cl click it in something, and it's fiddly, it breaks, and you know, this is simply you lay it on there, and it's it's fixed. So that's very nice. Also, the the needle tray is very nice. You have a, uh, a needle uh, drawer like this, and inside there's a flat piece of metal so if you close it it's pretty much a needle tin inside uh, your gramophone and you can shake it around it doesn't go anywhere the uh, with a lot of other machines uh, you will find that you have a cup somewhere here that gets depressed by a piece of rubber or you put a lid on it and the lid comes loose in transit and you've got needles all over your gramophone doesn't happen here this is a similar good idea just like the uh, the needle uh, slits the uh, needle drawer that we find in the HMV 101 and 102 it's simply a very good system I'm not only I'm very glad that I found this machine because it's a very uncommon machine, but also I'm very glad that it's a very good working machine. Like I said, with a lot of B Mark portables, that is kind of not the case. You bought an El Cheapo machine and you got El Cheapo results. With this, you get a relatively, it's not an El Cheapo machine, but relatively cheaper than most of the uh, A brands. And you get results that are actually better than uh, these machines. And certainly, you know, if, if you've got a good working uh, Cliftophone sound box, like this one is, you know, the sound is great. It's, it's fantastic. Quite loud as well. Oh, I need my break is... Uh, Very glad with this, uh, this the addition of this machine. Uh, well, I think that I said about everything uh, about this machine, and well, yeah, I'm very happy. Also, you know, this 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 material here uh, seems to resemble uh, some sort of celluloid. It, it, it cracks in the in the same way as. Uh, Types of celluloid or uh, types of uh, uh, plastinated uh, acetate uh, does, and I very much like the. Uh, if we can close this, you, uh, you know, you see, it has a very nice uh, kind of crystalline motive. Very nice. And, you know, of course, when I got it, uh, pretty much uh, all of that wasn't visible. It was totally dirty. Uh, this was was rippled and uh, all that. And then give it, you know, uh, a bit of minimal attention with glue. And, you know, you end up with something that is quite nice looking. Well, I think this is about it for the Cliftophone. And, uh, you know, thank you for watching like and subscribe and until the next one good day